Hey folks, uh, this morning in the studio uh, for our Friday reveal, we have a couple of beautiful boards from Arduino. And that includes, well on top here actually is the sort of add-on board that's very exciting, the Portenta Vision Shield. And then beneath that we have the actual seven. These are pro level boards from Arduino. They're sort of a new direction. This guy has an incredible dual core brain on it. Uh, it's an STM32H747, and it has a an ARM Cortex-M7 that goes at 480 mega, megahertz, and an M4 that goes at 240 megahertz. Oh, look, and, and it's so stylish. Um, they've got a new color scheme going on here, and let's take a look at it on the close-up camera. Let me tell you all about these when we get them open. Okay, so... I'm going to need a knife here. But in the meantime, you can look at the pretty box. Ooh. Where you can use a pen. Because I can't find my knife. <laughs> we are not going to use a pen. <laughs> we'll use a screwdriver. This is what happens when you have a workshop. All right. So before we rip this open, let's take a look at the specs. So it says connectivity, BLE, Wi-Fi, and Ethernet. Yeah, so uh, this actually has regular Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy support. Its Wi-Fi support is, uh, it can act as both an access point or a station or both. SDRAM, eight megabytes, uh, 16 megs of QSPY flash. Uh, as I mentioned, that dual core STM32 chip. The clock is at 480 megahertz. You've got uh, two megs of flash memory and one meg of SRAM. Uh, there's a number of ways that you can customize this board when you're ordering it at scale, and we'll take a look at those on the Arduino website in a second. Um, interfaces, you've got I2S, I2C, um, SPI, CAN, PDM, Ethernet, MIPI, DC, etc. Um, 5 volts input and 3.3 volts operating voltage, 84 digital pins out, and you'll be able you're you're wondering probably how do you get 84 digital pins on an Arduino and it's because of a couple of new connectors that they've got on here 10 PWM 8 analog um, dimensions and highlights oh this one has a UFL antenna connector and uh, we've got that ethernet and onboard crypto chip display port over USB-C and uh, USB HS this USB-C port in here is doing a lot of work uh, as we'll see. Pretty. Oh, we've got a special Arduino uh, authenticity sticker. I love stamped foil holograms. They are so cool. And inside, uh, thank you for choosing an Arduino board and supporting the community. It's definitely a step above your usual Arduino packaging as well. It's not just a little paper box. You've got these little 3D tabs and stuff. Cool. Various information. And then this little holder for the board. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, interesting. I didn't actually notice this uh, little connector over here before. Is that your JTAG? No, it's got five pins. We'll figure that out. Um, on the back here, what leaps out is these two 80 pin connectors. These are ridiculous. And this is how you're going to connect these two boards together. But you could also connect all kinds of other stuff for high speed, um, lots of connections. And that's how you get those ridiculous amount of digital I.O. You've got your USB-C port. Again, that can act as a host or a uh, client. And so you can use that as display port out. You can use it for power programming uh, as a USB hub and all kinds of other stuff. It's ridiculous. Um, here's your Arduino chip. This is your STM32. Let's see what else we got on here. Mm -hmm. uh, reset button. Classic. And then this little connector is also interesting. Uh, I haven't quite uh, figured out what that is from the specs yet either. But we'll take a look at the website and see if we can figure it out together. First, though, I want to open up this vision shield. Um, this is another really cool thing. So uh, the whole thing with having two dual 
two cores on here, is that you can do uh, multiple operations at once. And that includes you can run original uh, Arduino style sketches on top of the embed OS. You can also run native embed apps. You can run MicroPython and JavaScript through interpreters. And you can for run TensorFlow Lite. It's ludicrous what you can do with this board. Uh, those two cores really enable a lot, and they even see it as being part of a, uh, a computer system on its own. Okay, so that's where the uh, Portenta Vision Shield comes in. You've got all these brains, and what you want to do is you put them to use somehow. So uh, we have this Portenta Vision Shield, Shield board, which provides not only, as the name implies, a camera, but also two MEMS microphones uh, that can do stereo audio with beam forming to figure out where your sound is coming from. And that makes it a really, it gives it a lot of potential for smarts. Uh, let's read the back here real quick. We've got potential professional camera shield for low power machine vision applications. Uh, that low power part is interesting as well. You can actually wake it from uh, low power mode with, uh, for example, detecting noises. Uh, you've got your HM01B0 uh, low power camera, your two micro MEMS microphones, Ethernet connectivity. You can get this with either Ethernet or LoRa connectivity. Uh, SD card storage. So you've got an SD card slot so that you can store uh, the results of your machine learning um, thingies, <laughs> inferences on here. And uh, your Portenta HD connectors. Those are these high density connectors and JTAG for easy debugging. So let's, ooh, yeah, let's show you the whole thing again. Another like beautiful stamped foil authenticity hologram. Oh, I'm such a sucker for holograms. I used to make them in college. Different type though. All right, cool. So what you'll see here right off the bat is this unpopulated area. And that's where your LoRa chip goes if you're going to be using that kind. But this one has ethernet. Um, you've got your little camera on there, which I'll try not to put my hands all over. <laughs> you've got your two men's microphones with, uh, with the beam forming capability. And uh, again, these connectors plus your little SD card connector. And we can put these two together, but I'm not quite sure which way. They oh, they gotta go that way. That makes sense. Um, let's see if I can do this in a gentle and caring way. Oh! That's very satisfying. It's just, just a slight click, um, but they go together very smoothly. And there you have your full Portenta H7 and Portenta Vision Shield assembly. So let's take a look at the specs online and we'll figure out more about how you can customize this if you're building your own sort of industrial professional product, because that's really what this is designed for. Here we have the original uh, official Arduino Portenta H7 page. This does come with a price tag. It is $103 for this one for the main board and then $47.15 for the vision shield. So altogether about $150. So, but <laughs> with that, you get all this stuff. Um, you are able to easily run processes created with TensorFlow Lite. You could have one of the cores computing a computer vision algorithm on the fly, while the other could be making low level operations like controlling a motor or acting as a user interface in a more traditional Arduino style kind of way. Um, they have, give a few suggested applications. Uh, the two parallel cores they mention with the uh, multiple ways that you can run the logic, Arduino sketches, embed applications, etc. It's got a built-in graphics accelerator, which is interesting. Uh, it has the possibility of connecting an external monitor to build your own dedicated embedded computer with a user interface, uh, thanks to the uh, the chips on chip GPU, the Chrome Art Accelerator, uh, and it also includes a dedicated uh, JPEG encoder and decoder right on the chip. So they mentioned the 280 pin high density connectors. Uh, more about the Wi Fi down here. We also already sort of covered that. But um, yeah, it can handle up to a 65 megabytes per second transfer rate, which is cool. Uh, it is also possible to expose a series of different wired interfaces like UART, SPI, Ethernet, or I2C, both through some of the maker style connectors. Um, of course, the, the actual board itself is shaped like Arduino's sort of new maker system. 
or through the new Arduino industrial 80 pin connector pair. The USB-C port, did we miss any of that? It's got a ton of different functions. It can be used to power the board as a USB hub, to connect a DisplayPort monitor, or to deliver deliver power to OTG connected devices. Those are uh, USB on the go uh, little peripherals and things. Um, yeah, so actually in the tech specs they have, uh, they go into detail on what all your options are. These might actually be the same, <laughs> uh, but yeah. You can order this board in various different configurations. So there's the base default board, uh, which comes with that dual core processor, eight megs SDRAM, 16 megs NOR flash, um, et cetera, et cetera, that we kind of already covered. Uh, and it has an external antenna. Yeah, okay, it has a little connector for the antenna on there. And display port over USB-C. But then you can also uh, swap those out if you order these at volume with an external UFL connector for adding a higher gain antenna to the board. Uh, it can host up to 64 megs of SDRAM and 128 megabytes of QSPY flash. You can decide between crypto chips from microchip and NXP. The one on there is the NXP SEO50C2. And then, yeah, here are all of your options. This is all, we don't need to go through all of these. It's on the uh, main page and the tech page. You can use it with the Arduino IoT Cloud, but one of the really cool things is that you can also use it with the OpenMV IDE. So OpenMV is a machine vision system developed by Kwabana Adjaman, who has uh, you know, originally created it for his own dedicated hardware, but uh, you can use it with other systems now, including the Portenta, which is super cool. You just have to have version 2.6.4 or higher. Uh, and since it's now on 2.6.5, that's great. It's a cross-platform uh, piece of software, and it can actually work for Raspberry Pi too. Oh, that's so cool. Um, all right, yeah, and let's look at the Portenta Vision Shield now. Uh, this one is not yet quite available, but as we mentioned, professional computer vision, directional audio detection, ethernet and JTAG connectivity. So you can find uh, more about these. You can find the links to these in the description to the video. And then also I've put in links to our own uh, articles from Alistair and from Gareth talking about each of these modules. And they go into a ton of detail on not only what the boards are, but what their implications are, what their potential, well, what's exciting about them. Uh, so here we go. The shield, the vision shield comes with a three, but three 24 pixel squared camera sensor. Uh, you can use one of the cores on the Potenta to run image recognition algorithms using the open uh, MV for Arduino editor. Um, and they actually have lots of tutorials about that on the Arduino.cc website uh, under Pro Tutorials. So you can check that out again in the link to, in the description. But um, they also have a bunch of them linked at the bottom of this page. Oh, in fact, there's, yeah, there's a whole Portenta tutorials section. Cool. Wi-Fi access point as a USB host, BLE connectivity, blob detection using OpenMV. I think that's the one that we already had open here. Yes, uh, but also um, a bunch of other ones, updating the bootloader, creating a basic face filter. Oh, that's very exciting. Uh, actually, this would be perfect for Halloween. I've been wanting to do like a face filter. It might be a little late at this point, but yeah. Uh, debugging with professional tools. You have your JTAG connector on there. And that about it wraps it up for this one. But they've got a couple of uh, examples on here, like if you're doing QR code detection with the camera. That's so cool. And that's your blob analysis. So uh, remember to read through our articles from Alistair and Gareth if you want really in-depth information. This is actually from about 10 months ago. So there may be newer stuff out there, but it's a really good primer on the basics, including this interesting carrier board. And then you've got uh, Gareth's deep dive on the vision board. That about wraps it up for the uh, online stuff. Let's see if there's any questions. <laughs> Someone says, why the cost is too high? Well, if you look at what you're getting, honestly, um, this is designed for industrial rugged uh, 
applications. My assumption is that the price is this way because it is very small and very good at what it does. Uh, but, you know, to be honest, I don't have an exact answer for why the price is the way it is. It seems like you're getting a lot of bang for your buck, but it's true that there's other systems such as the Jetson and, um, you know, even the Ardu Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense has a lot of cool machine learning capabilities, although it doesn't have that cool dual core system. You can get cheaper modules that do similar things, but uh, to me, it seems like it's well thought out and uh, a good... It has, a, it has a ton of functionality packed into here, and it is a very small form factor. And there's a lot of swappable options, like this Ethernet boy versus your LoRa option. Uh, yeah, a lot of the a lot of the comments here seem to be about the price, and I do agree. I think that's one of the the standout things that might be a challenge here for this board. But um, Tariq says, "What kind of stuff can you make with it?" Well, as we looked at a second ago. With the uh, tutorials from Arduino, you can do any of these things. So for me, it would be really cool to make a face filter with OpenMV. Although, you know, so I've got some projects running that involve um, taking pictures of wildlife. And I think it would be really cool to do something along the lines of uh, being able to detect when an animal is nearby, which you could maybe do with uh, either blob detection or some other kind of custom algorithm. Uh, OpenMV has a ton of examples already around, and there's a bunch of tutorials here. So I think that uh, making a smart wildlife detecting camera would be really cool. Maybe be able to identify the species, maybe able to uh, detect certain aspects about them. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to give away too much about this project. So, <laughs> But um, yeah. There's, there's sort of a ton of things that you could do with that image and audio processing that I think would be very rich to explore. And uh, yeah. So that about wraps up our questions. Uh, be sure to check out the links in the description below for the articles. We got one more question in. Mm. Warren says, also, I think since it's not made particularly to the private sector or users, as they don't manufacture a big amount of these as they go by demand, I suppose, presumably referring to the pricing. Yeah, it's definitely not designed as a hobbyist tool, like most of Arduino's things. This one, they even made an entire whole new website for this series, um, the Arduino Pro website, which has its own like black or charcoal and lime green um, branding. And so uh, it's definitely designed for a different tier of consumer and not your sort of standard hobbyist. All right. Uh, that is going to be where we cut this off for today. But thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to check out the links, as I mentioned in the description. Stay tuned for next week. We'll have more cool stuff for you. And as always, hack on.